before even go to our main topic, we just love to know, as a country, where we stand in terms of malaria. Well, there's been a lot of progress with malaria, but it still is a problem. It, it's still a major cause of fever, of hospitalizations and death, especially in western Kenya, yeah, in, in, in where we work in Nyanza province. If you come in with a fever and um, your blood is tested for looking for malaria parasites, um, we will find it, whether you're a child or an adult, in more than 50% of, of those um, fever cases. And that's a lot. The country has made, or like, there have been many interventions to see in terms of from the testing to the treatment and diagnosis. Any new ventures that we, we are experiencing right now? Many people are not uh, given the opportunity to be tested for malaria and they come in with a fever and they're often treated uh, with the assumption that they have malaria. And of course the other side of the coin is um, that even in the high malaria zones, half of those fevers aren't caused by malaria, they're caused by something else. And so there's still a lot of development that needs to happen to enable clinicians to know more precisely what's causing that fever. Because the treatments for malaria don't necessarily, not, in fact, don't at all work for many of the other causes of, of fever. What are the factors that lead to people being blocked out of being tested for malaria? Just like you're saying, sometimes doctors maybe uh, overlook the fever thing. And well, in order to be tested for malaria, a patient would have to go to a clinic that has the test, that has the capability of e either doing blood smears or have the rapid diagnostic test. Most government clinics would have that, government clinics and hospitals. Uh, there, are, there are health centers that may or may not have the tests, depending on their, their own budgets and whether or not they've focused on, on that. And oftentimes in those places, the clinicians are forced to make the diagnosis based on their, um, their sense, their clinical sense of whether or not it's malaria, rather than using a diagnostic test. Uh, narrowing down to a study, a study uh, done by CDC, I, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, between 2009 and 2011 shows uh, co-infection of malaria and influenza. So back in, in 2007, we began this uh, focus on how important is influenza, both in our rural area where we do surveillance for infectious diseases in Assembo, um, now called Rarietta District, in, in a specific area called Lwak, uh, and also in Kibera, in, in the western part of, of Kibera. And so when, when people would come to the clinic with a fever, or if they came to a clinic with uh, a respiratory illness, we would collect specimens from the patients um, if they consented to have the patients to have the specimens taken, uh, and those were usually uh, collections of um, respiratory secretions, and those um, secretions were then uh, subjected to molecular testing, very sophisticated testing done here uh, at this campus. Uh, looking for the, the, the causes for their fever or the respiratory illness. And one of the things we looked for was influenza. And of course, as I was mentioning before, once we started looking for it, we found it. And we found a lot of influenza. And it's just as big of a problem here in Kenya and elsewhere in Africa as it is in places like the United States and Europe where there's been so much focus on it over the last uh, many decades. And so while we were looking at that, you know, especially in Western Kenya where, where we, we, had this, uh, we already have this big problem with malaria, we started to ask the question, is it worse if you have both influenza and malaria? Then uh, looking at that, how, how big is influenza or how, how should we actually tackle influenza? Yes, yes well I influenza is, is, is usually seasonal, so it, it will occur not generally year-round, or at least not in big numbers year-round, but tends to occur, not always, but it tends to occur in, in, in cooler months. Um, and that's true in, in uh, North America as well. Um, and um, during uh, cooler months, uh, especially, we have found that a substantial proportion of people that come in with respiratory complaints, and it depends on the month, it depends on the year, it's not always the same year by year, uh, sometimes 30 percent, sometimes 40, sometimes 50 percent of those respiratory illnesses in those months are due to influenza. And in terms of your question about um, what do you do about it, uh, there is, there's a couple of things. Uh, the, the most obvious one is influenza vaccine, which is available. Um, it's, um, 
it's used and, and promoted routinely in places like the United States and um, in Europe. And um, we have, um, in our surveillance areas, we have introduced influenza vaccine, especially for children, because um, uh, children is, are, are, have a special risk of developing influenza, and in some cases, they're more likely to transmit it to other people. So if you prevent influenza in children, you're more likely to um, prevent it in, in adults. And so, um, uh, an influenza vaccine has also been used here um, during, there was a pandemic of influenza in 2009 with something what's called the pandemic H1N1 strain. And that did occur in Kenya, as it occurred globally. There are other things you can do to decrease the risk though, like hand washing. That's been shown, simply hand washing, um, at, at key times has been shown to increase the, uh, decrease the risk of, of um, uh, both getting influenza and transmitting it to other people. What magnitude did, uh, did the study reveal that these two are? Yes, so as we expected, because malaria is so common that um, most of the, or, or more than 50% of the people that were tested um, with, you know, their respiratory secretions tested and their blood taken for um, mal looking for malaria parasites. More than 50% had malaria. They had evidence of malaria. Um, and uh, a much smaller percent um, had, uh, had influenza. But there was a, a something like 8% or so had influenza. And this was done during the influenza season. And then there was a certain proportion of those, obviously, that, um, that had both, you know, because so many had malaria. Uh, and, um, and so then we looked at those people that had both malaria and influenza, those people that had malaria alone, and those people that had influenza alone, and compared them. Out of the study, does this only affect the malaria kind of regions or other parts of the country? Are we, should we be on the lookout? Uh, so yes, in general, influenza is a problem that needs to be addressed. Studies that have been done elsewhere have shown that, um, that uh, severe respiratory disease, including respiratory disease that goes on to death in, in children, for instance, can be caused by influenza. So it is worth focusing on. We continue to focus heavily on it and to consider ways to um, feasibly and sustainably prevent influenza in the future. And the Ministry of Public Health and Sanitation here has also been very focused on influenza. They have an influenza team, actually, that is part of the uh, Division of Disease Surveillance and Response uh, within the Ministry of Public Health and Sanitation, who solely focus on influenza surveillance and trying to uh, come up with ways to prevent it. For the future based, what kind of uh, steps are you taking to what's the same? Well, the exciting thing is, there, oh, there's good news and bad news. One, you know, there, there are influenza vaccines um, that exist. The, uh, the vaccines work, but they don't work perfectly. They're not as uh, effective as uh, some other vaccines that are commonly used. For instance, measles vaccine is, influenza vaccine works, but there's a fair number of people that go ahead and get influenza despite being vaccinated. And so there's constant work to, um, to improve that vaccine, and there's, there's a, a, a great deal of progress. And in, in fact, we, again, with Kemri and with other collaborators, are planning to test one of those new vaccines to see how well it works here in Kenya. We know it works pretty well, in, in, uh, again, in North America. But can, you know, there are other issues here that um, can affect the utility of that vaccine. So we're planning on evaluating that vaccine here in, in both our Kibera population as well as in Western Kenya. And one of the big issues for influenza is that it, it also affects pregnant women. And so pregnant women um, can get influenza and when they do, they're more likely to have a bad outcome from pregnancy, uh, including you know, losing the pregnancy and, and so forth. And so influenza vaccination is, is recommended for uh, you know, um, mothers uh, who are pregnant, um, but again, very rarely given uh, in, in Africa.